Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to show you how to do a lazy material which you can use quite universally to a point. So a universal lazy material. This is more for like placeholder type stuff or if you actually really wanted to use it in a actual application you probably could. There's people that will say that this method's a terrible idea and there are people that will say this is method is a really good idea so take your pick I'm doing it anyway because I can so I have assembled four images just completely random off my hard drive completely random yes and we're gonna stick them into a material so we're going to need a material uh, to preview them I want to make just a really quick and dirty cube so I'm going to call this preview I'll just call it preview we'll go into this and we'll just give it a cube and we'll set the material to the new material we just made. New material. Just leave it like that. Okay. This is where we'll see all the changes because we're going to use the custom data parameters as well. Which will come down somewhere down here. Probably here. I think. Anyway, let's create a few. So we're going to go into the new material. Maximize that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go, everything's going to be based around the base color initially. But uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to, first off, we're going to expose that as a parameter. So that can go there. Now, this by default is your parameter 0, 0, 0, 0. But if you go down here to use custom primitive data, and check that, that index all of a sudden becomes 0, 1, 2, 3. So if you hit save, we'll get there eventually. I'm just going to drag that there. We can now go to this, which there is nothing being fed into the custom data parameters. So what we can do we go custom primitive data base color look at, look at that there we go okay so we can add all the elements of it and if we go select that to one we can go with we can make that red we can make it straight green You make it blue. Let's just leave it at red for now. So that's basically feeding these colors, setting these colors as you as you go. And you've got channel names which we can give. So we can say red, green, blue. Alpha, and those will show up over here. Red, green, blue, alpha. See here? Okay. So, as I said before, this is a lazy this is going to be a lazy way of making a universal sort of material type thing. I keep forgetting to close all that. So what if we want to bring in texture? So let's bring in a texture. So I'm going to select smiley. Now we can't just shove both of these into the one node because, well, it obviously doesn't work. 
and you want some programmatic way of being able to choose between either a base color a raw ugly base color and a beautiful texture so to do it what we're going to do is we're going to put a multiply I'm going to put a multiply up there we still can't do this so what we need to do is we need an add so it just adds them together None. now because you're multiplying this by one and this by one you're going to get sort of like a combination of both you get like a blend which is how these materials work gets there okay and wow look at that weirdness that's all because that's been set to red so back to the original so there's nothing going in so let's set that to one we get green and already I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going and yeah this is a very simple way of creating you know, if you set your if you set your texture up right you can actually do some pretty efficient and interesting things with um with some of your materials for say for example inventory slots and you want to you want to set the material on some on a on something there or uh, you want to have multiple objects like say for example different colored rocks or different different color tinted rocks and stuff like that so that's that's a good way of doing it but um not quite content here so what if we want more textures so let's add a few more add the other two of course we need to change these because well so we go with the cobble wall for that one and metal pipe whatever that is yeah okay and each one of these needs a multiply and then we want a pair of ads because again we need to now add everything together and of course we now need to shift that into that add node there and that add node there and then we just feed that into the base color so how do we now sort the mess out well it's simple we're actually going to change this a bit we've got these indexes the custom primitive data indexes so we've got zero one two three this one can be four this one can be five We'll give it a name in a minute. Just going to promote that, and we're going to promote that. Index five, index six. Select use data parameters, and that could be seven. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to name them really quickly. Um, base color, which didn't even spell it right. It's matter. Texture one. I'm going to call that texture two. And we'll call this texture three. 
we had four textures. One, two, three. Oh, no, we've only got three textures. Okay. So, and these are all set to zero, so you're going to get absolutely no output whatsoever on that. So, now we need to go hit save, so it can do its thing. It can compile its shaders, which, of course, there are only 16. 16 shaders, 237 instructions, 286 instructions in that. So, yeah, this is like a pretty lightweight material so far and we've got multiple we've got a fair bit of flexibility in there so we go back to the custom primitive data setting for this and what do we got here base color switch we just need to add these in so we want to see that one texture that's great there's the cobble wall which we can actually tint, being tinted blue at the moment. No, it's not. There we go. Let's tint it blue slightly. Let's tint it lighter blue. Yeah. So we've got a fit. You can you can tint that right quite nicely. So we're just going to turn that off, and we're going to set that to zero. Okay, so we've got all these. You can also set these at runtime, which is fun. So what we'll do is we're going to drag this into here. Actually, no, let's create the cube at runtime as well. So we've got a first person character. And we'll just add it in the beginning here. This is actually another project altogether for something else, but this is a bit of fun here. So we're going to spawn actor from class. Whoops. What do we call it? Preview. There it is. Preview. Spawn transform. And we'll just like manually put in some figures here. So 500, 500, 500. Let's just see if it pops up. We're roughly guessing it. Okay. There it is. There's our cube with our dirty material on it. That's simple. So let's give this a few key presses so we can just cycle through a few. Convert this to a variable. Okay. Demo cube. And we'll just take a couple of keyboard input, uh, inputs. So let's go with the one key. Uh, two key. Three key. Let's just start off with that. So for the first one, we want to get that and let's just set custom data. Now you've got all these. Let's go with, we want to set, we only want to set one. So that'll do. So there we go. When pressed, we want to set the very first one, which is the red. No, we want to set zero to red. And we want to be able to turn that on 
by setting the multiplier, which is 4, to 1. So if we go in there, hit play, let our beloved cube spawn above there, and we hit 1, it sets it. It sets those custom data parameters. So there we go. And of course we can have a bit more fun with this. set that to zero and that to zero just in case so for two let's turn on the first texture which should be five and this one turns six and there's going to be a little bit of overlap because we're going to have two going at the same time. Let's get one. There we go. will allow us to sort of flip between textures. One, two, three. go and we'll just move that down just a tiny little bit when we spawn it So there we go. Cheap, simple, it's good enough for placeholder stuff and it's still pretty efficient to even use in the end application depending on what the end application is.